How do you labor without immediate return? In the dead of winter, when you haven't played a game, or right now in the dead of October, when there's no football to be played, can you buy into what we're doing? Can you give your best right now? First 18 months were strange. You were here for another six months, another seven months, and before you had players on campus, it, it got strange. When we moved into the building, which was like late July of 2017, then all of a sudden we started to use the weight room. They started to put the field down. And then when the structure of the, the home side stadium started to come up, that's when it started to feel like, man, this thing's starting to close in. This is becoming our home. So we're here for you know, seven, eight months before we even got players on campus, which is different for us as a coaching staff. Uh, that was really exciting for us to get a group of guys, the very first group of guys on campus. Uh, we knew how big of a deal that was going to be. You want to go sit on the bed? I didn't know anyone, so it was different, but with the group of guys that they recruit and the coaches that we have, it didn't take long to mesh and find a group of guys. No seniors, no upperclassmen, you know, first 50. I'm in Indiana, I'm three hours away from home, I don't know anybody, you know, it, it was crazy. First day out here, it's like, wow, like, this is it, like, it's time to go now. From the get-go, the coaches did a great job bringing the culture of IWU onto the football team. And when they come out of the football field, it is about discipline, it's about technique, it's about playing hard. We want to be the best football team in America, no bones about it. But we, we're not going to live under the belief that to be the best football team in America, we've got to sacrifice our spiritual growth, we've got to sacrifice our love for one another. A lot of colleges kind of steer away from that word love, but here we embrace it and we love each other unconditionally. We want guys who are going to go full speed on the field, off the field, socially, academically, physically, and anything less than you living in your best constantly isn't good enough. The second year is definitely easier, but also you gain different roles as leadership and as helping other guys. Well, these guys are swimmers as well, so I'm just taking what I learned over the past year and help apply it to them and be like, this is where, where I went wrong or this is what I did to, to get right. It's easy for those young guys to come in and say, hey, this older group is, the, is, is how, it, how it should look like and, and the type of man I want to become, and that's really special. I think we're going to shock a lot of people. I think a lot of people are doubting us because we're young, because um, we're a startup. These guys have taken every single rep. Standing back looking is like, wow, we really have something special here where you know, we can really do something. You know, we just have to trust in our coaches. We've been after it for a long time. We're a bunch of 19 year olds that have been working our tails off, you know, getting after it and that we're on fire for Jesus and that we're here as a team, as brothers, and that uh, we're not just gonna roll over. We're expecting to win every game and like our culture and the way we love each other is gonna be a huge advantage to us on Saturdays. So I don't want you to give anything but your best. All right, love on three. One, two, three, love. I don't want to just be a place where we know what to say. We want Jesus in, in the life of Christ to come through who we are. We want them to pursue excellence and be driven and challenged and encouraged to grow in their relationship with Christ. That doesn't have to stop just in your faith. You can pursue excellence in the classroom. And for us, we're blessed to be, be able to pursue excellence on the football field. When you come here, we got dudes that are crazy, crazy tough crazy strong and they're on fire for Jesus. I mean, that's, that's awesome. Whether we win or lose, we're all gonna grow as men spiritually. Uh, we're all gonna grow academically in the classroom. And you know, we're all pursuing a relationship with Jesus and having that at the center of your relationships on the football field and, and in the classroom and with your coaches is unbelievable. Because ultimately, this game's a lot bigger than football for us. I mean, it's, they're teaching us how to get ready for life. When we recruit a kid, we bring them in and we say, this is what we're about. You're going to come here and your coaches are going to love Jesus, right? We're, you're going to come here and we're going to push you in every other phase outside of football. And then when they show up, we do what we said we we're going to do. It comes down to not even the football part. I haven't played a football game here yet, but everything else aside from football 
is amazing. Will I come here without football? Of course I would. I love it here. Whether we won them all, lost them all, won none, doesn't matter. Did we absolutely do everything that we could to be at our best? And if we did, it's a success because the foundation's been laid culturally. The future of Indiana Wesleyan is really, really bright football perspective. And we're just thankful we get to be here to lay a solid foundation.